Where were the other? Yeah, kids? last one's northeast. I see him. Northeast, like over I here. I see him in northeast. Oh yeah, I see him. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs>
you hit your shots no matter how far they are. But this one, there's fall off damage. So the, the only time you're going to have the reticle exactly on the center point, exactly on the person, is if they're 0 to 70 meters away. Now, what this looks like is about this far. So this is probably about a 20 to 50 meter range. Anywhere between that range, you don't have to aim any higher. If you want to go for a headshot, just put it right on his forehead and shoot. There's nothing you got to do about that. Just shoot right on his head. <laughs> now, right about here, if they're all the way down that far, this is about 100 to 150. This this is where you're actually going to have to start aiming up a little bit. So right around this area, put it right on that second mark. If you guys can see that little second mark right under the center, that's where you want to put his head at. It's right about there. Take your shot and it should drop perfectly right on him. So this is a super long range shot. As you can see, he's 150 plus meters. This is probably like 200 to 300 meters. You still want to keep it kind of high, but go right in between the second and the first one, right about there. Right on that second one, if you're going for a headshot, put it right about there, maybe a little bit lower. And if you shoot, the fall off should be just perfect. So as you guys saw, you don't have to aim too high. Like I said, in this picture right here, you never want to go below this area. You never want to aim higher than this area basically on the target. So you want to keep the person's body around this little circular area of your scopes at all times, you guys. You never want to go higher or lower than that unless we're talking about angles. Now that's going to be step number four that we're going to talk to you guys about today. So now in step number four, we're going to talk about when someone is higher than you or below you. Now this one, you don't really have to worry too much about. If somebody is on top of a mountain above you, you still want to keep it around that little circular area that I showed you guys. There's nothing about fall off damage when it comes to that. Um, sometimes it depends on how far they are, just like distance. Distance will always be the same, but the up and down, if someone's above you, the bullet does not matter. The bullet doesn't have to arc a certain way if they're above you. If they're below you, the bullet will not drop even farther or go up even higher just because they're below you. It's still all about your distance, you guys. So don't worry about if someone's above you or if they have high ground and you don't have high ground. It's still going to probably be the same thing. Um, the only thing that's different is they just have the high ground advantage on you. So you don't really have to worry about that. I just want to clear that up with you guys because a lot of people think that, oh, just because they're up higher than me, I have to aim even lower or higher because th there's an angle to it. It's not true, you guys. Step number five. Guys, I know this is for beginners and stuff like that, so if you're intermediate, don't worry about this, but step number five is finish your shots. Even if you knock somebody or you see your teammate knock somebody, Take your time and actually finish those kills because even though it's a non-moving target, it still gives you time to practice. It, it, that's all it is, is practice. When you're shooting a non-moving target or a person crawling, it's better practice for you to be able to see how high up or how low down you have to aim. So it's a lot better. It is a smaller target because their body is crouched, so there's not much you can hit. So it makes it harder, but it's good because harder things make you better. So if you get good at something that's hard, you'll be really good at it. Step number six is leading your shots. Now guys, this determines on how fast the person is running. The distance doesn't matter too much. The distance is all about up and down. Now how far they're, or how fast they're running determines how far right or left you have to aim. So you guys gotta balance this out together. Now if you determine that they're sprinting full speed, you have to go far right. If they're just walking, like in this clip right here, you guys can see I'm only a couple of centimeters ahead of that person because they're going to walk into the bullet. I'm not exactly lined up up and down on the person, but I'm just slightly left of the person so that way they can walk into the bullet. So that's basically what you want to do is have them walk into the bullet. Now we're going to cover sprinting. This can be a little difficult to teach, but you guys have to learn how fast the bullet travels and that's all you got to do is learn how fast the bullet travels. I can only teach you exactly how far it is from a certain distance, but when it comes to farther back from this clip right here, it's harder to determine unless you know how fast the bullet travels. But the second you shoot more sniper shots, you'll learn how fast the bullet travels and you'll learn yourself exactly how far ahead you have to sh shoot it. But as you guys can see in this clip, I have it a little bit more far ahead from the person rather than the first clip. So at about that speed and that distance, I'm aiming right around here to pull my trigger. When the person hits that location or spot on my crosshairs, this is when I'm gonna pull my trigger so that way they can run into the bullet. Like I said, it's learning the timing of your bullet so they can run into your bullet and they can connect at the same time. Keep in mind that this is only around 50 to 100 meters back. If they're any farther than that, like 150 to 250, I would aim right around here 
anything farther than that is going to be a little difficult. This is probably the farthest back you'll want to go if somebody's sprinting from like 300 meters away, but you're not going to see that too often. Now that's basically all the tips that I have for you guys when it comes to sniping for beginners, guys. This tutorial video was people that need to learn a little bit more about sniping. Basic steps, practice guys, practice, 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 pick up snipers and actually use it. You'll never get good unless you use it. So that's all I have for you guys in today's video. If you guys want to learn an advanced tutorial on sniping, give this video a thumbs up. If we can break a thousand likes on this video, I will immediately upload an advanced tutorial and this is going to cover one, when to pull out a sniper and use your AR, how to switch from your sniper to AR quick after you get a, get a hit marker, when to rush kids after you knock kids, how to double snipe basically using two snipers and knock two kids at the same time. It's just going to be a lot more advanced tips and stuff like that. But guys, thank you so much for the support on the video. In the comments down below, let me know how this tip video worked out for you. And I just want to let you know now, if you're throwing hate in the comments, it's fine. I'm just going to hide your username from the comment section so you'll never be able to comment on this channel again. So it's fine. If you guys hate, it's up to you. I check every single comment. So anyone that hates, it's just getting removed. Again, this is just for beginners. I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you guys so much for 85,000 subscribers. My goal is to hit 100,000 by the end of March. I think we can do it. It's only the third day of March and we're already at 80 5,000. I know we can do it. You guys are awesome. Thank you all for coming to the stream last night. It was fun. We're going to do another live stream next weekend. See you guys there and thank you guys for so everything, man. Everything. Peace.